So we have a revision video here for AQA GCSE Geography, Paper 1, Section B, Living World. And this case study, we're looking at a cold environment and we're looking at Svalbard. So, first of all, we just link to the specification. So we're looking at the case study of a cold environment and we're looking at the development opportunities and challenges within that place. So first of all, about Svalbard. So it's a Norwegian territory located in the Arctic Ocean. It is a mixture of polar and tundra environment and it is the, the largest island is Spitsbergen, which has the main town of Longyearbyen, which has a population of 2,700 people. So our opportunities for development, our first opportunity is mineral, mineral extraction. So underneath the ice in Svalbard there are large amounts of coal reserves and mining for coal employs more than 300 people. It's a large source of income for the economy of Svalbard. However, it is a source of greenhouse gases when burnt, which obviously is bad for the environment. Our second opportunity then is energy development. So, coal is used to generate electricity, mainly for the population and obviously for heating as well. However, they are trying to switch to more renewable forms of energy, for example, using geothermal energy like in Iceland. Our third opportunity is fishing. So the Barents Sea contains over 150 different species of fish. And fishing is usually monitored by Norway and the Russian governments to ensure that fish stocks don't get depleted and that fishing is sustainable, so therefore will be there for the future. So, our last opportunity is tourism. So, tourists visit Svalbard to explore the natural cold environment. In 2011, 70,000 people visited Longyearbyen, and 30,000 of, of those people were cruise ship passengers. Because of this, the harbour has been enlarged to cope with more ships, and tourism provides over 300 jobs with for the people of Svalbard. So with these opportunities for development there are also going to be challenges. So our first challenge is the extreme temperatures. So winter temperatures usually fall to around minus 30 degrees Celsius. So this means that the people are at high risk of suffering from severe frostbite. They have to wear several layers, sort of even in the summer months. Our second challenge is construction. So building and maintaining houses and offices roads, the harbour and also keeping the mining operations open is quite a big task. So building work only tends to take place in the summer months as in the winter there is little to no light and also because the ground is made of permafrost which is permanently frozen ground it's very hard to dig for foundations, so a lot of the buildings are built on sort of stilts into the ground. Our next challenge then is services. So water, electricity and sort of sewage waste and sanitation all has to be piped to each of the different houses, office blocks, etc. However, we can't dig these pipes under the ground because they would freeze and therefore be useless. 
So they have to be built above the permafrost. And they usually have to be heated as well so that, the, you know, so that they don't freeze and I can actually be used. And then our last challenge is accessibility. So Svalbard can only really be reached by plane or by boat. And there are only 50 kilometres of roads, actually properly built roads, which is mainly in the main town of Longyearbyen. So most people use snowmobiles to get around, as that's the easiest method, especially in the winter months. So next we have an exam question on Svalbard. So using an example, so you would talk about Svalbard, explain how cold environments can provide challenges for development. So six mark question, worthwhile at least planning or having a go at.